Hello, ladies and Germans, how you all doing? This is Con Ulrich. This is Rang Roo. Hello, hello, hello. And folks, the seventh season of League Play continues today. We are on Shechedron. Rang, who do we have? What are they bringing? Well, on the left hand side in the blue, we have Kurz Foxes playing the fifth mountain division. The Maverick Income. Right hand side in red, we have AS playing the Southern Mechanized Core. We have a Maverick Income. Well, well, we do have ourselves an actually super early artillery piece setting up and dropping smoke, which actually I really, really enjoy this kind of play. This is kind of a variant of what we generally see with those fighter bombers just dropping smoke. Or, heck, even making like an early strafing run here. And I feel like it's one of those opportunities that really could have been... Oops, maybe the sight lines are a little rough here. But they could have been absolutely devastating to kind of go and really force an early disembarkation here from a lot of troops. Oh, but we're seeing AS going to be trying to force that disembarkation with some P2s. Is he just going to be blind bombing? I think so. Just going to be bombing that little support gun park here. Yeah, really do a lot of damage. It's the main crash. Oh, uh, yeah, that, that yeah. Does, does a fair amount. Yeah. You have pretty good hits, stunning up those guns and knocking out the one machine gun, of course. The, you know, opening of this map is usually just an absolute dash over its portal. And both sides are going pretty hard. The smoke's dropping a little bit dispersed, not exactly blocking AS's line of sight. But he is bringing in some armor and also pushing pretty hard for the hill. Well, and, and that's the thing, isn't it? Is that AS desperately wants to take that plateau. You saw him in the north actually being very, very aggressive into that town. But anybody who went further west than the 50-yard line, well, they, they just aren't really around anymore to kind of talk about it. Yeah. Yup, yup, and Kurz is really just trying to get that long-range advantage here, using the, the captured Italian stuck. And oh, the Pack 40 does go down, so pretty good kill. So, it's, yeah, it's just going to be a hectic battle over this southern hill. Yeah, you know, I was actually kind of watching as this infantry starts to kind of start duking it out. You know, take a this on Niki, get shrimp pioneers, even get Berg to you, get shrimp pioneers. And the numbers, I think, are going to be more than enough to kind of get, you know, there you go, going off right immediately. Now, at least, yep. Geberg's take a strife over here. Rather deliciously fire, you know, powerful unit for the size that we have here. Five SDG 44s, LG, you know, um, light MG really overall, and a Panzerfaust. How do you feel about the 25 points for that? Yeah, that's a really powerful squad. Of course, the uh, main issue is the low numbers, but you're definitely getting, well, everyone has an automatic gun, so you can't complain too much. But in these battles of numbers here, well, actually, holding off really well. The strong SVTs and the Redemkas aren't getting absolutely shrek there. Also, with the goodbye, Jake, I can't say properly. The Mountain Fuhrer, <laughs> with the sniper rifle helping out quite a bit. That's true. That's true. And the Gebergsjäger yeah, forces a, a, an early surrender here, leaving just one tank of this on Niki and the hill, shockingly enough, inside German control. Yeah. It's going to be a pretty interesting matchup, I think, because the Mountain Division doesn't have a whole lot of armor. It's really just a few Sturgs and then a couple ABs. While AS definitely is much more plentiful on T-34s as well as SU support guns. And this is a map where armor, especially on the southern side, can play a pretty... Heck, it just all over, it's a pretty good armor map. So it's going to be interesting to see how Kurz can hold off, even his anti-tank tab. Like, it's, it's anti-armor in general is very limited. He's going to really use his infantry very effectively. I believe the generous way to put that is that it's lacking in support. But yeah, yeah. man, I, we still have the Pukchen over here, though, too. So, again, not a ton of range, of course, under a one kilometer in the first place. And he's out in the open, so this guy's pretty much a donation over here to the Stroke SVT, I would feel. Yeah, that, that Gebergsjäger MV42 is not even going to be enough to support. Yeah. And yeah, pretty even Stevens. I mean, both sides are playing Maverick, so there's no real time constraint for anybody, of course, or it's preferable to still try to win early where you still have high income. But uh, things are starting to peter down a bit. Both sides still... Or I'll say both sides trying to contest for the hill, but it's pretty obvious that Curse is going to get it under control. True, for the time being. Although we are watching these Gebergs here go down to the south and be absolutely shredded. Oh, wow. Like just monstrously so. Tanker this need key do not bugger about when they have a Molotov in their hand. No. PPS eight is a secondary. Oh yeah, exactly. I mean you can you can tell me as much as you want the submachine gun fire does it, but you you really know that when you let a man's fire, 
Yeah, that, that's going to cause more than enough issues right there. Yeah, you're seeing Curse with a decent amount of long range fire support here. Once again, setting up a lot of support gun platform on his side of Plateau. AS trying to bring an SU 152, but that's way too hot for him to bring up, so he's going to risely back it off. Now we're getting a, a small battery of, of 76 twos coming to the to the central, you know, eastern lung here. And I think they're going to be left without maybe a huge amount of activity immediately. There's there's really not a whole lot in the center to really con, you know, concern themselves with. Yeah, especially right now, but I think it's more just to help consolidate. Yeah, because he doesn't have to worry too much about armor from Kurz's side, so just cheap fire support units would definitely help out try to even the odds on the infantry playing field because even though the Germans don't have well have a lot of infantry in terms of cards but they're not as beefy compared to of course it was Soviet squads. True, true, but I would argue uh, to a certain extent, especially the strife, um Yeah, they're pretty I, good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But we're seeing up north a little bit of play, both sides well, really, I should say AS actually invested quite a bit. Yep, one T-34 causing quite a bit of havoc. And these guys have anti-tank, but none of them have decided to get close enough yet to actually use the anti-tank. Well, that was the thing I was trying to figure out here is why there wasn't a Pupchin in the north. I feel like Pupchins are made for town defense anti-armor. Like, the, yeah. you, know, you stick a couple support squads of infantry around them, you just kind of say, okay, bring it, and then that's that. There's no, nothing can yeah. really come after you. And it's 30 points, you kill a single T-34, you're already cost-effective. Exactly. Exactly. And with the, with the, you know, oh my gosh, what's it, 200 pen, I want to say? It's it's absolutely it's obscene. Hard. It's yeah. obscene. Like, it's better than a pack 40. Yes, you don't have the HE. Big freaking deal. Um, down to the south, Tango this on Niki. Uh, not riding to battle in tanks, necessarily, but going in themselves in this little M2 truck. And I'm thinking we're going to be getting, well... A couple of 20 mils are coming forwards, but I don't think there's going to be quite enough to prevent these Gipburg's Furies. I was going to just try to make his ray, but he did get spotted. Oh, he's making it, yo. Know, he's falling back into enemy lines. And we're seeing a cluster HS129, a rather odd sight. Trying to go for T-34. I think he'll get it? No. No. <laughs> he had wow. one job. Yeah, exactly. One job. PE2, on the other hand, uh, much less concerned with things like, you know, hitting the, the same area code. Um, and I think this LG-42 and the Pac-40 are probably going to go down here. At least, well, yep, never mind, there you go. Real good pickup, yeah. I mean, Kurz only has a very limited amount of fire support in general, so every pack gun or stug he blows up is a real big benefit for AS. Uh, in the meantime, did that, yep. So that uh, Veltro over there did go down. Denisov P40 makes it out. Okay. We're seeing, I think, what will be a push very soon onto the central lung here from Foxes. It's got two. Well, it's got, it's got a lot of infantry in general, as well as a Poopchin ready to crest over the hill. Maybe he's bringing in some more fire support. No, he's bringing in more reinforcements up north. And, and, and there we go. There's the Poopchin. Telling you, man, those things are made for town fights. Tight sight lines, you don't have to worry too much about it. You don't have HE, but it doesn't matter quite as much. Ugh, that's 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 the way you gotta be. Yeah, it even has the raid to treat which exactly. is quite nice. We are seeing the puss onto the lungs now. Not a whole lot of infantry here from Kurz. Ill fortunately oh okay, AS does have some pretty scary tankos in there. I mean the stroke SVTs are gonna get picked up rather quickly. Buy that one T thirty four. That's proved to be a bit of a hassle. A bit of a hassle, yes, but I I, I don't feel particularly good. And see, there you go. There's there's already the, the Stug forty two going down. Um, yeah, I don't feel great about this push, even remotely. Yep. yep, just not enough fire support backing them up here, and just not enough infantry in general. AS to be able to come on through and pretty much clear all of this up, and that's exactly what he's doing. Pupture in the meantime takes a T34. He he pays for it with his own life, but again, like you said, points positive. I'll yep. take it. And now we're seeing AS bringing two Zis free guns into the center. Probably trying to provide. He's actually unloading them pretty early. I think he might actually just use them as a. I think he. Oh, he's the artillery one. 
Oh yeah, 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 yeah. These are the ones you're just kind of moving on, shifting on forwards. Uh, by the way, you can kind of pretty much tell that because uh, yeah, the seventy six two part. Yeah, but um. Oh no, yeah, it's the F twenty twos and the uh, the right. Okay, these are just the regular ones. Yeah, the right, the, but the the, the but ones that was indirect. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now down to the south is kind of interesting. Stuke forty two ended up taking out a T thirty four at the base of the hill, which means there's again one tanko still on that hilltop, and that's it. Now, unfortunately for Kurs, even taking out that Tanko doesn't mean getting a points advantage. Indeed, he's lost, you know, let's call it the sternum between the lungs. And the northern town it gets more and more blue with each passing moment. So, not really sure what the prognosis might be here, Doctor. What do you think? Yeah, AS has made a pretty good conceited push here up north. And Kurs is bringing in a whole heap of... Well, not a whole heap. I see a lot of those reinforcements are going in for the center once again. So he's a very dead set on trying to retake out, or not retake, capture out along. Even bringing in some preliminary aircraft bombardment, yeah, which should prove to be pretty effective if he just hits that clump of forest. Oh, it's my favorite conditional there if. Uh, no, he's not even oh, going no. for that. He's going for the Resvetka. That oh. is an interesting decision. Yeah, really, so just be using that to preliminary bombard the forest and then move out the infantry everyone's running away from the bombs, of course. Oh, wait, he's he's oh. reciting. He's going to get shot at and watch him go down without dropping his bombs. <laughs> that would be awful. Yeah, not not sure why he did that. Heck, he could have... There we go. Yeah. Here we go. I, I like this better. Bomb the town. Heck, he probably could hit the actual... Crossroads not been more than enough. Um, he's gonna drop a little bit short of the ideal, I would argue. Yeah, it's definitely a bit of a blind bombing run. Yeah, I think he's just going for T forty four actually. But nope, nope, too no, far no, south. No, yep. Um, destroy really some Russian peasants' through. home. Yeah, exactly. And that's the issue, isn't it? Is that right now, despite the fact that theoretically the numbers should be over here on Kurz's side, especially in terms of infantry availability. Not really being reflected in terms of just battlefield presence right now. Yeah. We are seeing, yeah, central push now, number two. A bit more beefier infantry, just bringing in the regular mountain hunters. And the tankos are going to have to hold out quite a bit. They'll be able to. I mean, again, these guys are in the attack, and despite the fact that they have those lovely, lovely G43s, again, like you said yourself, the Papa Shah is still ridiculous, and these guys are not completely. Wait. No, oh, that guy's no dead mollies. now. Yeah. No, no, you're right. The mods are both mollies. gone. Jeez, never mind. Okay. So we're taking some pretty heavy casualties in the Oskaburbs. Yeah. Oh, Mount. I'm just going to call them mountain troops. Uh, check out the PTRS hero. By the way, he's he's oh. starting to move towards that earliest T intersection back down. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be terrible. I think he's going to get a couple shots here. He's going to get at least one cheeky kill. I'm calling it right now. Yeah. Gotta love the PTRS cheese. I suppose love is a bit of a, a bit of a mixed bag here. The lungs do fall underneath German control, but um, you're going to see, you know, delivered a little bit of antibiotics by way of HE. They're going to really, really make them reconsider their life choices. Uh, meanwhile, to the north... T-34, 76, kind of, again, being aggressive in this Geburgsieg of Fusiliers. Just, they they can't really hang with the big dogs because they don't really have any big dog biting weapons. Yeah. I think we're going to see a trade of map control, where AS is going to try to push very heavy up north and capture the town completely, while Curse is just going to try to push very heavy in the center. And both sides are at a point where there's not a whole lot of flags for them to capture in their retrospective zones. Mm -hmm. Preferably, Kurz can push a little bit up north and get one, maybe two flags where that 76 mil gun is in that general area. But AS realistically can only really capture one more flag, the one by the bridge. So, not not great trade in potential, yeah. Though AS has managed to recapture the hill down south, but Kurz is doing a another large counter attack here. With his mountain troops, which are actually, this is pretty fit, isn't it? They're gonna be fighting up a mountain. Yeah, you know, it'd be kind of cool if these guys were like, ah, oh, yes, when fighting on you know higher elevation than your opponent, getting a ten percent buff or something like that, I <laughs> probably <laughs> would break the game a bit. That'd be really kind of cool. Um, 
one thing I'm noticing is that Henschel, you know, uh, cluster bomber, POS, man. That thing's just like, it doesn't hit anything. The spread is ghastly. It's got to be used against like an entire armor defensive. Yeah. I don't know. No Stu command. No, no, it is not. No. Uh, off map 203 is down to the south. There's another one to the northern side, but that one's not really finding the same amount of employment just yet. My guess is we'll see that once these four squads of Strelkies get deployed. Um, but down south, yeah, hitting that intersection. Good call in my mind. That's been under, under German control pretty much since the word go. Yeah. Or maybe the word los, but, you know, same, same. I like give it 30 seconds and he probably risks he's used it in the central hill position. He might actually cancel it, which would be good call cool considering the amount of mountain troops which are coming on down that hill, or coming up the hill, actually. They're just going they're... down it soon. Well, it's true. I mean, when, when they're coming around the mountain, when they come, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, yep, he cancels it. Oh, did he? No, he didn't. It oh, took okay. down. There we go. I was like, oh, it disappeared, but I can't read numbers, apparently. That's ah, fine. Um, northern side, there actually is another barrage that's going to be incoming really far behind the front lines. Again, odd placement on a couple of these. Yeah, you'd think you'd use that a little bit more in the front line area where the current attack is coming from, so you, you know, of course, pick up the remains after you stress everyone to hell and back. But this is going to work really well here for Foxes, as now he has the armor advantage up north, with a few of the stunks left in his deck. And he has a lot of infantry, so this could be a pretty effective counterattack. Well, and there's no Soviet, you know, armor really immediately around the next corner, so even better still. Yeah, and those stugs at close range are pretty nasty against C-34s. Yes, yes, and decent armor by that matter too. Yeah. Uh, a big sorry to my own viewers just now who had the screen shake. I was a little bit too close to the artillery strike. Thankfully, you know, for the Gebirgsjägers, yes, they're pinned, but for the most part, they're still alive. I really like his ballsy pussy AS during the stroke DPs. He's just going full hog for that one flag by the bridge. And I think, okay, I see what he was doing with that artillery strike. He stunned up the rear line and then just tried to encircle. I, looking back, yeah, that was a pretty good artillery strike because he's meant to get a very strategically important position on this tower and actually move the front line a bit. I realize it's it's for the moment here, I and mean, we were seeing a second artillery barrage, but I think it should have been the first artillery barrage. Um, mostly because of falling back, but falling back into another artillery barrage. I feel like, <laughs> sure, but this could have been achieved the same way by putting the artillery in the opposite order. Yeah. The AS off map is going to come in very clutchy, because that's going to buy AS a lot of time as that pushes completely disintegrated now into absolute panic. Fortunately for Kurz, he does have a decent backline by the bridge, so his fire support guns are going to be able to stop that sneaky Russian at all. Now down to the south, we actually missed another artillery strike, and you can see right now, Sapiris, Automachiki, Sapiri Kamrotti taking the southern hilltop as our artillery turns another hilltop into the surface of the moon. Mm-hmm. Also, PTRS squad goes down. Gebirg's uh, Sex und Reitzig taking that bad boy out. But yeah, we're almost 20 minutes into this match, Khan. And it's pretty neck on neck. In terms of map control and in terms of points, it still feels this is anyone's game to win or lose. There's no drawing, that's for sure. That's true. I mean, this is an SD1, so. Yeah, there's no time limit. Or SD44, you know, the, the 43rd successor to the SD franchise. Um, now, one thing, I, I kind of thought that the superiors would hold up a little bit better to Gebirgsjäger. I guess that the lack of cover from getting the entire force blown to pieces. Um, also just the veterancy. Yeah, but I guess that the three-star veterancy, the three Iron Cross veterancy, I don't think it would be quite that obscene in terms of the differential uh, stress resistance. Yeah. Um, northern side in the meantime, by the way, see, look, there was no aggression afterwards. They've killed a couple of squads here and there, but the front line hasn't moved. Yeah, honestly, I, I don't really blame AS too much because there's not too much worthwhile ground to take from committing any more offensive maneuvers in that town. It's going to be hard to capture that one uh, crossroad section by the bridge, but he is going to allow Kerr to once again build up a pretty nasty force and 
think Kurz will be able to commit another counter-attack in the town, and hey, he's got off-map artillery of his own this time, so he can return the favor with high explosives. Well, and I understand that the, three, the 300 barrage is terrifying, but I almost feel like sometimes I want my artillery barrages to be those lighter calibers, the 170s, just because you have much better saturation of firepower. Yeah, and cheaper. Sometimes... If you're using it offensively, you don't necessarily need as much bigger kaboom. You're just using it as stress. But of course, blowing up stuff and getting kills on enemy tanks is nice. But this would be more inadequate for Kurz each. But see, here we go. Look, look at the dispersal. So much more pleasing. It's pinned an absolute ridiculous amount of this material. Kill two squads. Yeah, I. This is a just. This is a massive success by comparison. Yeah. Some, some of his own troops are hit. That's the price you pay. You know, friendly fire is friendly fire. But there's still more than enough guys here. And indeed, three more squads being rushed onto the four. A little bit optimistic. But regardless, being rushed on in. Yeah, he does manage to temporarily capture one flag. Pinning down some of his own troops has definitely slowed down his counterattack and also AS. Rather timely, bringing in reinforcements. But this is going to allow Kurz to slowly inch his way forward. He's got a second brown to capture that second flag. So this could be a good turn of events here as Kurz is now starting to take the scoreboard. Now he's going to watch out because the SU-85 has his own troops in defilade. Uh, not in defilade, excuse me, in the flank. Um, kind of as the same way his own kind of positions on that hilltop, formerly on that hilltop, um, had the Russians as they kind of came on further forwards. By the way, Stug went down. What killed it? The T-34-76? Probably. Yeah, it's kind of a guess. Um, now, uh, one thing we didn't quite touch upon is, you said before about the difference in cost between the 170 off map and the 203 over here for the Russians. You are paying, I mean, and this is not maybe 100% a fair comparison, because you are paying for getting yourself a KV-1, mm -hmm. which in the terms of the 7th, you desperately need, as I would argue you desperately need. Um, a fully functional tank as well. Exactly. Cannon included. Exactly. Exactly. And the armor itself is is good enough to kind of keep things on even playing field with a lot of the lighter German anti-tank. Yeah. So. I think late game this is going to be harder for Kurtz just due to the lack of tanks and fire support available to him. He's really going to rely quite heavily on the infantry and the few aircraft which he has. As he's probably running pretty low on Stug's Pack 40s by now. Well, that's true. He just lost another Pack 40. I took out an SU-85. Uh, by the way, in the meantime, let's see what happens when there is a nearly unblemished... Never mind, Henschel's going to blow it. Here it comes. Hopefully blow up the tank. Nope, no, didn't even get his no. bombs off. Now, the Ultima Cheeky, on the other hand. You know what would be a cool idea for that, Henschel? If they put, like, a... Like, oh no, not a 37, but like a 75mm gun on it. And then you would, like, use it as a flying anti-tank gun. I mean, there was precedent. I'm... Yeah, I might I might propose that to the lift drop. Go for it. I'm sure they'll listen to you. I would, I would say, please, don't hold your breath about how quick they'll get back to you about that, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the meantime, What's you're... mailing address these days? Um, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure you have to send it six feet under. <laughs> PE2, in the meantime, going to kill this poor Gebirg's fus uh, Fusilier, because I don't think, yep. Yeah, that, that ground fire is not going to do yeah. diddly squat, and this ground bombing will. Yep. I saw so the second time that Fusilier has been bombed, and that one was definitely much more effective. That's for darn sure. Yeah. Yeah, but ne it's quite funny. Neither side has a whole lot of aircraft, but they either they both don't have a whole lot of highly effective anti-air. It's more of the short-range stuff. So aircraft, as we're seeing, are actually being pretty damn effective. Then not getting immediate. Well, for the most part, not getting immediate rest out before they can drop their bomb. Yeah, it's kind of a sliding scale there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, it is a 15-9, though, so one thing we didn't quite pay attention to was the fact that the lungs are under German control. Oh, it's enough to get that flag. The hilltop isn't any longer, and I think it's probably going to be a little more difficult, but we do see a line of Stugs kind of slowly rumbling up the hilltop. Not really the best time for them. Three Storky squads up there already. Got the KV-1. 
And I would argue you can even get stressed out in the flank from the 25 mil anti-aircraft position, which, never mind, doesn't have a great line of sight here. But regardless... Yeah. I hope he doesn't get too aggressive with those thugs, because he has no real infantry support to back up his current push. Well, if you, he doesn't really need to. So if you look to the northern side, that town is the third barrage murderous. Oh, wow. Murderous. There is routed. nothing left. Yeah, exactly. Apart from that one T-34, he's a bit of a plucky guy. That's a very good flip here from Kurz. I mean, he's... I mean, this, this map is pretty much split between three major contestant zones, the two central flags in the northern town, the lungs, and then the southern hill. And Kurz has been doing a very good job of playing all three. You know, as we've seen, AS is starting to fight back a little bit onto the southern hilltop. But it's going to be, no pun intended, a bit of an uphill battle for him from the rest. The central position can be hard to attack. Here he is starting to do that. And the town now is going to be a bit murderous, I think, due to how much Kurz has invested up here. Even more so, I mean, yes, they have an SU-122, which, what's he trying to engage? Oh, he's engaging... Wow, he's off the flat gun. Mac, that poor guy's dead. Um, yep, in one shot and everything. <laughs> I love that thing. Um, now, even more so, I mean, he's getting some of those crazy distant flags right about now, and he's gonna lose them, don't get me wrong. But, for the time being, he's still carving away and carving away and carving away at that 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 ticket counting yeah so i mean i mean both sides are in the c phase maverick income now so this is when the offensive operations start to peter off a little bit you don't have that much income so it is definitely very beneficial for Kers to pick off a pretty good lead in terms of map control and point tick at this stage in the match because he can just kind of not so much sit on his laurels, it's still a raw to fight, but he can play a bit more defensively and that yeah, can work out. But even though it's going to be more defensive, it doesn't mean that's going to mean he's going to do anything. So indeed, go to the southern side, we see four more squads of Kipurg's troops of uh, various kinds, you know, Strife as well as Jaegers, going up that hilltop. And I think those guys are desperate to keep out a line of fire from that Stug. But other than that, like, yeah, uphill battle for these guys, too. Still going to yeah. take dreadful losses, but I don't think these Russians can be supported. Yeah. Well, that's your 85 coming in, trying to pick off the Stunk. Does and get does. a very good kill here. Very, I mean, there's only a handful of Stunks left alive. But for Kurz, I mean, he can play the infantry spam game all day. Which is the main advantage of his division. So just playing that infantry spam on the hills and the lungs and in the town, that's very good territory for him to well, be spamming. The PE2 is going to shred this approach. Yikes, here it comes. I've seen some nice spread though. Unfortunately, this bomb's going to drop very long and doesn't get really the result he's hoping for. Wow. No. Just only barely slowing down that piss. Given AS a little bit of time to counterattack, but his counterattacking force is nothing really all that scary. No, but he's going to be able to get close enough before those Germans can actually engage him, though, too, which is a victory unto itself, I would argue. Yeah, it's mainly for superiors can get in close and just throw in a satchel charge. His Joker DPs are going to be generally useless in this engagement. True. True. Absolutely fair with noting. Uh checking around otherwise. I mean, this this flag's going to flip in a second. This is not shocking whatsoever. Yeah. Okay, Kurz still taking that nice old plus... Oh, plus two, actually, now. Yep. And all oh, good pick-off from uh, Danishov. Yes, uh, that's true, and I think that's a, a valuable kind of pick-off, to use your term here. Um, More uh, valuable, I would argue, is the superiors down south throwing out those satchel charges, so... Yeah. Manson to gain a little bit of ground, yeah. But he really needs some better CQC troops. Joker DPs are, or I guess, and currently helping out a little bit, but they are out in the open compared to the Kaburbs Jaeger. Yeah, never mind, it's just going to be enough firepower to push him back. Purely heal. And yeah, he really does need to get armor up here, because that's the one advantage he does has is the armor support, and that's a good location for 1434 to take. 
that is accurate. Forgive me, I'm watching some small firefight as a Maximum bravely tries to go and, en and engage those troops on the northern side. T-3476 also coming out into the open. Going to shred some of these Gebergsjäger as they come on in. The Strife as well falling back. Very, very wise of them. Um, but regardless, I mean, say what you want to. This is still going the way of the Germans. Yeah, and oh, I just lost stuck uh, to a Radevka squad by pushing it a little bit too aggressively. But the main thing is Kurds just have pretty much the infantry advantage all over the map in terms of quality and quantity. And he's fighting over areas where it is very infantry focused and it's working really well for him. He's making his push into the center and it's really just the T-34 holding the ground and there's only so much ground he can hold alone. Now the PE-2, so see, one's going for that Pack 40 the other one's going for the infantry on the hilltop. Uh, Pack 40 is going to die here, and I wouldn't be surprised if the leading edge of the Kimberg's Jaegers would be swiftly falling behind. Yes, he goes down. Yeah. Oh, very clutch bomb and run. Again, two very good pickoffs here. Fine AF once again, more time. And roll the 129 this time, drop off his clusters. And he'll, he'll get them off, but just watch the spread, They're just, it's, it's terrible. Look, does he? <laughs> he's... Has he got a single kill? No, oh. no. It's been the biggest waste of 115 points this entire time. He hasn't even forced it like a morale fl like flight. It has nothing has done anything successfully for him. Yeah. Uh, pilot would get uh, some strong rage when he gets back to base. Yes, and then probably an increase in his his <laughs> final daily allowance of of iron. <laughs> an iron cross, right? Oh, absolutely. I'm sure yeah. they'll put an iron cross in this tomb. Um, but across that 32 minute mark, I mean, it still is a negative two over here in favor of Kurs, as AS just can't seem to get the concentration of forces. And, and part of me is wondering if this is a, a times two moment. What do you think, sir? Uh, yeah, yeah, let's do it at a 32 20. Sounds good. So here we go. Strokey's kind of being brought on in over here down to the central section. Times two. Yep. But yeah, it's just in terms of, um, like, Kurz is just treated more efficiently. And he's just meant to get yeah, those big, big, scary blobs of German infantry onto all the key points. Actually, like Denisov over here has just not nine lives, but, um, survived a lot longer than I expected them to. Mm hmm. I've been quite enjoying how the aircraft haven't been immediately getting blapped when they come out of uh, Bourne. We've actually been able to see them um, play around a little bit. But because Neva Scientist is too many, there hasn't been so much spam. That doesn't really surprise me though either. I mean, if you look at the reason they're not getting blamed immediately to use your term here, we got 20 mils on one side and we have largely absent ZSUs on the other. We have just 25 mils on the other side, so not the scariest anti-air yeah. web. Yeah, no, 37 mils to really do much of the heavy lift here. Which is usually the go-to anti-aircraft weapon. You know, it's so bloody good. Forgive me for, for kind of speaking on a turn here, but T-34s, I don't know that there's really that many left. There's been a lot of them going down here. There has been. I think we're starting to see some more SUs being deployed as well. But they did have like a pretty decent amount of Back, but they have been going down, and yeah, it is the tap out. A justifiable one. I mean, wow. looking at the KD, very, very close, very, very bloody. But I agree. I think that I think that was a justifiable, reasonable tap out. I mean, you, you cannot be aggressive after you've lost that much equipment going through phase bay. Yeah, it looked like in terms of just the map control, Kurz was trading much more efficiently because he just had much more stuff in the field. Mm -hmm. But no, he took some pretty heavy losses, yeah. Hero of this. Stroke 42 over here, Walter. Two uh, SU-152s and three T-34s. That's about in case. five more kills than I expected that tank to get. In an Italian tank. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's an underpowered 75 mil gun. Hey, I mean, but you know what? Good on him. Congratulations. Yeah. Probably the killiest guy outside of that 172 off map. Yeah, wow, that's a 
killed a little bit of everything off map. Not bad at all. Oh, no, there was a ZSU on the field. It's just, it didn't feel like there's any ZSUs here. I mean, and I wonder if yeah. that... Not that, that the, the German air power was the reason that they won. It, it certainly wasn't. But it was really contributed to the entire process. Yeah. Yeah, it just wasn't... It just wasn't a whole lot of anti air, but Evis Knight has a whole lot in their deck. And looking at kills, yeah, nothing... Nothing crazy. No, nothing crazy. But yeah, good job for Curse. Well done indeed. So folks, that I think is going to be it for coverage of this particular Division 2 match. Uh, come back on Thursday. Yeah. Until that time, I'm Connell Work. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.